YouTube, what it be like? It's your boy Fo and bro, we are back on that NBA Live 18 and today we have something a little bit different in the Best Bill series. Somebody asked me to uh, drop a video on a slasher. So what I figured I would do is make the bill from scratch. That way we can answer a lot of the questions that I normally go over, kind of give you some insight where I put my attributes, stuff like that, man. And that'll kind of help you a little bit more as far as grinding your player out and trying to get 299 as quick as you can i'm on my xbox one as well all my friends play on ps4 so i play it over there exclusively so this will give me an opportunity to kind of get started on my xbox so drop a gamer tag if you do play on xbox because i don't have any friends that have it on xbox so that'll be dope too man i have built slashers on my ps4 before so i do have experience with them so hopefully this will be an informative video. Now, as you can see, the slasher bill is modeled after Russell Westbrook, man. So it's going to be very athletic. It's going to be able to slash, get in the paint, be pretty quick and still, uh, you know, play point guard and distribute. So the first thing we're going to look at is the height. All right. Now, when we're looking at height, I honestly go by like a rule of thumb of trying to make sure that my bill is going to be six. 6'3 or taller. This bill can go up to 6'5. So honestly, there's a couple of reasons why I want the height instead of the speed. All right. First of all, um, you know, I get better shot contest on defense, right? That's always going to make a huge difference. And defense wins championships. I'm a strong believer that being uh, having every advantage you can on defense matters. But then secondly, remember that height also affects your wingspan. So what that means for you is in the lateral movement, moving side to side. We know we have those arrows going left to right. Being a much taller player with some good plus 80 uh, speed and having speed foot speed to go left and right is going to definitely matter. So being taller matters and also having a broader base as a player is going to help uh, create coll collisions, so to speak. So that way, when they're trying to get by you, they'll run into you as opposed to you being small and you're not creating uh, or the game not picking up on collision detection and then they're getting around you a little bit easier. Also, offensively, I'm a slasher, bro. I got to be tall so I can catch more bodies, of course. And then if I'm taller than you, I can shoot over you. That matters. So we're going to go for 6'5". You could make it, like I said, between 6'3 and 6'5". I like six five that works for me now you got a couple of options as far as the weight okay uh when we're looking at weight a common mistake that i've seen online with slashers is people will make a slasher and then try to make them tall but then try to get all the speed back with the weight that's crazy because you'll lose the ability to get that cheesy ass blow by animation. This player should be no less than 191 pounds. And then honestly, uh, I'm going to make him at least 205. I'm not going to make him 206. And the reason is, is because I do actually lose a point of speed if I do that. But remember, right at 205... He's going to actually change his physique. As you can see, it goes up at 205, but I'm still able to keep my original speed and my original strength. Well, what does that do for me? It creates that cheesy ass blow by animation over and over again. Because I'm strong, I have a 75 strength, but my physique is going to dictate that I'm getting that animation a lot more often. And then on defense, I told you I'm taller and now you're not going to get as many blow buys on me because I'm a lot stronger as well. So we're going to create a 6'5 player. He's going to be 205. 82 speed is more than enough because honestly, to tell you the truth, being effective at point guard has it's not as much your speed than it is the dribble packages that you have if you want to sauce up and play like that. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and look at after we create this player, we're going to look at his skills. So we got to go ahead and skip the draft. That's going to get us level seven. That's going to unlock some skills for us. Now, honestly, when I'm working on a player, I create a new player. I look at the player that I have and I look at what's going to be the most effective thing that the player can do. And then I work on that first. So 
In this case, this is a slasher. So I'm trying to get to the rim because I'm trying to end games as quickly as possible. So from the jump, shot off the dribble or mid-range, it doesn't matter which one you select because what we're going to be focused on is going to be dribbling and layup, okay? So uh, I'm going to get my dribbling up to, I don't know, at least a 77. We'll go 78 so we can get the Kimba moves. And if you don't know, bro, uh, Kimba, like I said before in other videos, Kimba Tier 2, I think, are the best dribble moves in the game. I mean, bro, if you really want to sauce up somebody and make it where they can't guard you, Kimba Tier 2 is the wave. For real, trust me. Um, and then everything else I'll put on my layup. So as we can see, uh, we'll go with that. That way we at least have a 75. And then we'll try to get our layup and our uh, dribbling up to at least an 82 before we even think about uh, putting anything on mid-range or getting at a level 15 for shot off the dribble. Um, as you can see, this player is going to have um, dribbling and then shot off the dribble. This is a unique point guard because it does not get the passing uh, maxed out. So this is going to be a more offensive build because I think mid-range and shot off the dribble will go hand-in-hand hand because the step-backs on this game, like I said before, are extremely overpowered. Your secondary skills, you have an option to go with passing, but I can show you a trait that you can actually sub in that I think will actually assist in you not selecting this as a secondary skill. And then, of course, we want to go dunk. Now, we, why wouldn't we want to do that, especially when we don't get a dunk trait? So we want to catch bodies. We got a slasher. And then we want to go with on-ball defense. Now, I have seen people comment that they don't have any on-ball defense. Now, to each his own, if that's what you want to do and you want to make this a pure offensive build, just sub in passing for on-ball defense. I would prefer on-ball defense and dunking because it's so easy to get your ankle snapped in this game. Now, let's go ahead and look at the traits um, as well. First of all, let's look at the signature ability. The signature ability is break it down. Every assist will grant a stackable boost to your ability to finish at the rim. So this means you're going to get a stackable boost on top of your layup and your dunk at the rim. So if you're running the offense effectively and you're hitting your, uh, your, your stretch bigs on the pick and pop, you're hitting slashing players going to the goal, you get an assist, then when you go in that paint, man, you're going to be playing much like a wing scorer because you'll get um, um, like a boost to your dunk. So you'll be it'll be easier for you to body opponents. Um, I think it's OK. I personally, uh, like I said before, at point guard, I feel like playmaker has the best signature ability by far. Um, if I had to rank it. Uh, then maybe backcourt defender or point shooter. It's a toss-up from there. Now, when we're looking at the traits, which we got two slots available, I'm going to go ahead and put in steel on this player, and then I'm going to put in sure handles because I want to sauce up, and then I don't really want to lose stamina while doing that. Uh, stamina loss on windbreaker, I don't think that matters that much. Man, I really feel like sure handles is more valuable. Now, the other, uh, once we can unlock this third trait at um, level 21, we want to start looking at some of our other things that we can work on. Bullet pass was what I was talking about. That would really be a good option for you if you don't choose uh, passing as a secondary skill. Know what I mean, um, because um, it basically unlocks the ability to make quicker passes and receive a boost to pass speed. When you have like, a 70 to a 72 pass because you're not picking the pass skill that's really the main thing that it's affecting is your pass speed and then the accuracy um so pass speed can be taken care of this way that way you'll have a lot more zip on your passes all you really need to do is earn assist and then also um pass to a teammate for open shots that's really all you got to do man uh so i would actually build my uh player out with this included in some instances then also remember this player gets contested shot as a uh, ability and it goes all the way up to rank three so what that means for us is is when we get this maxed out this player is going to have an 82 attribute at contested shot so what does that mean for us and how we can utilize this player 
this player is going to be more built like a pure shot creator off of NBA 2K, right? Because you get the shooting off the dribble that's maxed out. You get the maxed out mid-range, and now you've added contested shot so you can basically shoot in people's face. Know what I mean? So that is definitely something I would highly recommend on any loadout that you have to build this in. Now, after that, uh, you do get um, other things as well. Don't reach is something that wouldn't be actually in the um, in park or anything or streets, rather. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend, as you can see all these other attributes you can get, you can get post moves, but post moves don't max out. You can get rebounding. It doesn't max out. You can get relentless defender and spicy dish screen driver. There's a lot of stuff. I wouldn't even worry about the stuff like open three or corner three, unless you really feel like you're going to be playing a lot off the ball and, and they're going to leave you open. Maybe unsuspecting you can run to the corner, but I wouldn't worry about that. I just play to my player's strengths. So step back and step Step off are two very important things. Step off actually only goes to uh, silver, so I wouldn't concentrate on that so much. What I would concentrate on is step back because now that goes to goal. You have a shooting off the dribble at 93 and a mid-range off the dribble at 93, and you have contested shot. So now this is going to make you truly a pure shot creator bro you're going to be able to dominate in the mid range and then you're already a slasher so they are expecting you to drive to the goal you got a 93 layup which is extremely um like unusual for most bills in general so you can finish with a layup you can dump at the rim as well but while you're driving and you're becoming a threat like that and with the dribble packages that I'm talking about being able to sauce up and get by people, they're going to be expecting to meet you at the rim and you can just step back. You get the right jump shot so you get the right step back animation and you'll really be a lot to handle with this player. So my loadout would look something like still step back and contest this shot. If I'm not going to, if I feel like I get good shot timing, if you're one of those people that has great shot timing, then don't even put in the step back. Just put in still bullet pass and contested shot. Those would be my two loadouts. That way you can still pass effectively. You can still shoot off the dribble and then you can get your still up to goal as well. And then you can be extremely uh, good on the defensive side of the ball because you're tall as well. Remember that now couple of things we're going to look at first of all let's start our league and we're just going to use the default settings because we want to go to the league real quick it don't matter what team we go to or anything like that we need to go in so we can kind of look at his overall attributes and then i'm just going to tell you real quick um how i would go about grinding this player okay can i bypass that no i can't yeah i can all right cool so it's gonna load up man and then we're gonna take a look real quick because i mean overall bro i don't even play the league i gotta be honest um i probably really need to start doing that but bro i got like millions of rp on my other player I've spent quite a bit uh, without ever playing league. And there's probably crates and stuff I ain't even open because of that. But I don't really too much care about that, man. It's just about being able to boost my player up and be effective and play the game. So it's loading now. As you can see, it's trying to tell me all this stuff since I first went in here. This is like my first time going in here on my Xbox. So, um, all right, let's look at the team roster. And I think I am the one that's me. So, all right, we're going to load this up. And we're going to look at my other skills, all right? So, like I said, your contested shot without uh, that that trait added on is going to be a 70. So, that's definitely not that high. Your own ball defense would be a 72 if you didn't select it. Uh, your driving layup, you see what I got that as. Shooting off the dribble, as you can see what that is. Your passing is actually a 72, which I think that's really serviceable uh, with that trait that I told you to add. So you got court vision at 82. Uh, you can see that. 
see your three point shot and that's the main reason why I wanted to go in here and this is the main reason why I don't care for like working on anything that has to do with the three point shot because you can't lift this attribute so bro why would you hurt your team by constantly shooting three pointers if you only shoot a 62 that's terrible for real just like I mean it's more times than not, you're going to miss that. So it doesn't make sense. It's not like the wing score where you're getting a stackable boost towards it. Uh, defensive awareness and rebounding, you see that still is actually really high, bro. It's at a 76. Uh, and that's unusual for most point guards that don't get a steal skill. Um, most of them are going to be at a 70 or 72. So I thought that was really interesting when I saw it. Makes it really easy for you to work on your steel badge. And then um, we can also look at the fact you got a 72 dunk. Uh, 72 inside shot is really good as well. And then, like, your speed, of course, you know what that is. And your vertical, all of that, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, that is basically this build in a nutshell. The way that I would go about working on this player from here, since I've already told you how I want to map out my attribute points, the quickest way for you to get a player, like, built up as quickly as you can is to just completely bypass this and go play in the pro-am tour you're going to be playing games to 21 you're going to be finishing in between anywhere between um 1800 and 2200 rep like per so you're going to be leveling up like hella fast and then, like I've mentioned on several occasions uh, before in the past, all you need to do is go to this first tier, find the game that works. Now, what I mean by that, find the game where your matchup is a created player, not an NBA player that's like an 82 to 85, 89, like playing through this shit. Don't do any of that. Find like the created player that's like a 76 overall that's trash. And just dominate him. The thing is, is that's going to put you in a position where you'll be getting these games over with between three to five minutes of pop. Now, if you're playing league games, you might be playing five minute quarters just to get like 3,000 rep or 4,000 rep at max. And you're playing five minute quarters, four quarters. When you can only play a three to five minute real lifetime game that'll get you 2,000 rep. In this case, as you can see, my matchup is not a great one because I got Jameer Nelson. He's an 83 overall point shooter. So I would actually play through this game, go to the next game, and then once I go to the next game, I think it's a created player over there. Like, he's like a 76 or a 79 overall player. He's not that good. So then I would just continue to play that game over and over again. You can do anything, bro. You can pull up a movie on your computer or anything. It's like playing my career in 2K. You just go on autopilot, get those games knocked out hella quick, and I'm telling you, bro, I can go from... I can go from a 73 overall to an 85 overall in like two hours just playing like this over and over and over again it's hella easy you can get a player knocked out to a 99 overall in roughly you know i don't know man roughly about like four to five days so that's how i go about maxing my players out so hopefully this video has been informative um and this kind of gives you a little bit of insight on how you would want to go and create your build I am actually going to work on this build, so I'll do like an update for you as well. So like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well so you can know when we post. And as always, respect the OGs. Peace.